Let's see, one, two, three. You listen? Uh, I'm going to try something really risky here. I'm going to try to say something in Romanian, okay? Buna diminata yeste un privilegium sapiu aisin orasu vostro frumos. Sum forte feriti ca sunt aisin. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, guys, uh, my name is Ruben. Uh, my last name seems like uh, joining uh, two words, right? Stressful and repository, right? <laughs> Uh, I work for a company called Out Zero. Uh, if you don't know Out Zero, uh, we are a company focused on developers. Uh, basically, we offer uh, a platform for help developers to innovate faster by providing an authentication and authorization service, uh, giving some extensibility endpoints and some simple APIs. And we support almost all the programming languages uh, by, by SDKs. Uh, so stop worrying about authentication and use Out Zero. Uh, I'm coming from a city called Medellin, Colombia, on the other side of the ocean. Uh, basically, uh, this is like uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, kilometers, so it was like uh, pretty far away here. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Keybase, and GitHub. My handle is the grammar. Basically, I use Keybase if you want. Oops. If you want to send me some cryptocurrency like Lumens, or you want to chat with me. Uh, also, I'm sharing my Spotify playlist that I use while coding, so feel free to also uh, listen to this playlist. Uh, I like to say that I am an expert in nothing, but I'm curious about everything. As an example, the other day I was uh, wondering why we are calling uh, errors bugs. Does anyone know the answer? Why we are calling the errors bugs? Well, let me tell you that I know the answer. Uh, we call errors of like uh, bugs, like bugs, like uh, since like 50 years ago, with uh, basically an error happening in a computer relay, uh, and basically they found actually a mod in the relay, and this is the photograph of that bug that they found in the log. It was pretty cool, right? So basically, that's the reason we are calling the software error bugs. So why the 60s? The name of this talk is Stop Authenticating as it were the 60s. You know that the 60s were important for the introduction of the TV series, The Flintstones, uh, the famous speech from Martin Luther King, and The Beatles. And it was a really important time because it was uh, a time where this uh, prominent American computer uh, named Fernando Corbato uh, who was a computer scientist. Uh, he created uh, the first password in order to secure access to files of a large computer system in 1961. That was 58 years ago. So the world has a problem with passwords. Passwords are a root cause of 80% of data breaches. We know like every day in the news, like uh, Yahoo has problems with the passwords and many other known services. An average user has more than 90 online accounts. Up to 51% of passwords are reused. And more than 30% of all online purchases are abandoned due to forgotten passwords. That's one third of online purchases. So, and another thing, there is a big problem between our systems and the passwords. And that is our brain, because we tend to forget our passwords. So please don't try this at home, like pasting your password in a posit in your laptop or in your monitor in this case. So raise your hand if you feel identified with some of this data. Like, are you reusing your password? Let's be honest. Are you reusing password? Do you have an average of 90 online accounts? Pretty much, right? I can ensure that at least Everyone has five different online accounts, right? So what can we do to mitigate them? So let me tell you a little bit about a recent standard called Web Out N or Web Authentication. Um, let me tell you the, the official definition. It's a recent standard published by the W3C, defining a web-based API for strong authentication 
using public key cryptography. That was clear, right? Let me go into details in each of uh, the, the most important things that I consider for web authentication. So the first thing is, it's a recent standard from the W3C. The W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. It was created by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the creator of the World Wide Web. Um, by the way, they are celebrating 25 years this week. And basically this uh, consortium was created to ensure the long-term growth of the web. So what it needs to be a standard for the W3C? What, it needs, uh, what was the process that web authentication uh, go through in order to become uh, a standard? So first, it needs to be a working draft. So the W3C published a document uh, asking for review with the uh, standard for web authentication to some uh, technical organizations, uh, the community, and the members of the W3C. The second step is the candidate recommendation, which is like the result of that review ball, and after that, they request like uh, an analysis for uh, review the implementation of the standard. As a result, they create another document called the proposed recommendation. That means that they already verify the technical uh, sonability and implementability of the standard, and they uh, send uh, this for uh, recommendation to the uh, technical committee and for the director of the W3C. The fourth step is the W3C recommendation. That means that it's already a recommended standard. So we can celebrate that web authentication is an industry standard in March of this year, and for that reason, we have here a surprise that we're in a tie opening his mouth. So the first thing, it's an standard. So keep that in mind. The second thing is a web-based API. What that means that basically we are using JavaScript. With web authentication, we have two methods, one for create, the credential and the other one forget that credential that we use for authenticate. The third important thing is that it's using a strong authentication. What that means that you need to work out. No, I'm kidding. Uh, basically, that means that uh, there is an important uh, organization, technical organization called the FIDO, that means uh, FIS Identity Online, and they exist with the purpose of remove our dependency for using passwords how they're doing it. We have different uh, use cases for authentication, like passwordless authentication, or use it as a second factor authentication, or multi-factor. And how people can use these different uh, factors. They can use a security key, or they can use biometrics, like facial recognition, the fingerprint, or their voice. This is more common on smartphones, but there are also uh, desktops that are supporting these biometrics, like, for example, Windows Hello. Uh, the another important concept about web authentication is the public key cryptography. So let me explain you how public key cryptography works with an example. It can be used in different ways, but I'm going to mention two ways. Uh, the first one is uh, the use as for encryption. So let's imagine that we have Bob and Stephanie, and Bob wants to send a message to Stephanie. He's going to send, hi, Rebel Jays. But since this is traveling uh, through the network, there is a risk that a malicious attacker wants to intercept that message and get what Bob is sending to Stephanie. So what can we do in order to prevent that? Well, Bob can use a public key to encrypt that message, and Stephanie is going to be able to decrypt that message using the private key. As the name said, the public key is something that can be shared uh, in the public, everyone can have access to the public key, but the private key should be kept secret, as the name said. And now, uh, Stephanie is going to be able to unencrypt that message using the private key. The other way to use a uh, public key cryptography is to create a digital signature, and let me tell you an example about that. Again, we have Bob here, and Bob wants to say, this is the same message, hi RevoJS, uh, but in this situation, Bob has a private key and is not going to encrypt the message. What he's doing is sending the message with a digital signature. So uh, Stephanie is going to be able to verify with that signature that the message is coming from Bob and the message has not been modified. 
This is the public key cryptography that web authentication is using. So is it the end of the passwords? Well, uh, the answer is no necessarily because we can use uh, web authentication as a passwordless mechanism. That means that we don't depend on using a password or in the current applications uh, we need like to have a transition period where uh, we are offering an alternative to users that already are using password to use it as a second factor authentication. So aside of giving passwords to the users, we are giving them the option to use uh, a second factor in order to ensure like a strong authentication. So let me explain you how well authentication works. Web authentication is about trust with some key features. And these are like uh, technical aspects of uh, how web authentication works. First, it needs to be a strong, a scope, and attested. A strong means that basically uh, you can be using like a hardware security model, or there are many uh, smartphones that are already supporting this, or even uh, some uh, uh, operating systems uh, like Windows, for example, are, are supporting uh, secure hardware model. When I'm talking about a scope, is that the agent, the user agent, uh, generally speaking, the browser, is uh, going to attach that uh, key of, of hers to your origin. So it's going to be safe and it's going to prevent being vulnerable to uh, phishing attacks. And a test that means that there is a trust be between a relying party, I'm going to explain that in a second, between the relying party and, and the browser by issuing a certificate. So there are some elements uh, when we talk about web authentication. Uh, we have the user that wants to sign in to your web application. Um, usually the user engine is a browser, but can be another user agent. And we call all of these uh, the client. Also we have the reliant party, which is the uh, authentication provider that can be uh, Auth0, uh, or you can use uh, social logins like Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon or your own web server. And the other element is the authenticator. The authenticator can be uh, a UV key that is a really famous uh, hardware authenticator. You can use your smartphone or a USB token. So web authentication has two steps. The first one is the registration. I want to register uh, my authenticator. So these are the steps that usually happen here. So we have the user that wants to authenticate against your web application. And we have the relying party. Imagine that your application is that, using the relying party. So the relying party is going to generate a challenge that is going to be sent to, to the browser via the JavaScript API. And the client is going to request the authenticator to generate a, key, a pair of keys a private and a public one. And it's really important to notice that the private key is going to be uh, stored safely inside Authenticator. Uh, it's not going to be uh, outside Authenticator, never. So the Authenticator, what it's going to do is to digital sign that challenge and it's going to send the public key to the relying party. And remember that before I said that the public key can be a store and can be known for whatever has access to the public key. So it's safe to store the public key on the server and may uh, store any additional information like the uh, credential ID, uh, some user information that can be able to associate that public key to the user. The second step is the authentication. Now that we registered the authenticator, uh, how the browser can authenticate user uh, using web authentication. So again, the user uh, requests uh, sign in to the web, your web application. And again, you have the relying party. And you are going to use JavaScript and the browser uh, in order to request a challenge from the relying party. And now, uh, the, via JavaScript, you are going to use the authenticator to sign that challenge. But in this time, you are not going to send uh, the public key because it's already a store in the relying party. So the authenticator is going to sign that challenge that is going to navigate again to the relying party 
and the relying party now that has the challenge and the public key is going to be able to verify the digital signature. If that digital signature is correct, uh, means that the user is valid and hence it's going to be authenticated. So there are some uh, different types of authenticators. Uh, for the demo today, I have like a different keys. This is, for example, keys from Google. Uh, it's called the Titan keys. That uh, basically comes like two keys here, uh, a USB key and a Bluetooth one. Uh, basically, uh, is used as a backup uh, key. Uh, also, this is a UV key that you can use uh, keep connected in your laptop all the time. Uh, and there are several types of UV key. Uh, they work in the same way, but some of them can support things like NFC, or they can support uh, more advanced uh, characteristics, but in, in, in some way they are the same. Um, they allow you to authenticate using a strong authentication. But that is not the only way. For example, if you are using Windows Hello, uh, you have different sign-in options, uh, like biometrics. And, and that means that if you are using a web authentication, you will be able to use these features from Windows Hello in order to authenticate against your web application. Uh, for example, uh, did you wonder uh, when you are using Windows, I don't know if there are some Windows users here, but you can register a PIN, or even in your phone, you register a PIN and the PIN is just four characters. Do you think that that's secure? I'm sorry, just four characters. But do you know that it's considered more secure than a standard password because these uh, four numbers are stored in a special cryptographic uh, unit uh, in the hardware called the TPM. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the reason that it's secure because it's not going to leave never uh, the hardware, it's not going to travel to the network, so it's secure. Uh, this is more common in, in the smartphones uh, when using, for example, your fingerprint. Uh, the, that information is stored in a special hardware uh, that is secure by design. So let me show you uh, a demo how uh, web authentication works. So I'm going to connect here my authenticator. So Outzero has a really nice uh, online demo that uh, you can try that basically you can use for test uh, web authentication in the browser. But before showing the demo, uh, let's see uh, a little bit how the API works. So remember that there are two steps in web authentication, the register phase and the other one is the authentication phase. The register phase, uh, this is the code, of course has some variations, but you can use uh, uh, some standard uh, API uh, via this debugger and this is like uh, the code will look when using uh, web authentication. So let me show you how that works here. So this is the first step. You are registering your authenticator. I'm just going to register here. So what it's doing here is sending the challenge to the browser. And it's asking me to use a uh, since I'm using a Mac that supports uh, authenticated with my fingerprint, it's, going, it's asking me if you want to use the billing sensor, or it's asking if I want to use the USB security key. In this case, I'm using a security key, and since I, you can configure like the timeout, in this case, uh, well, I got an error because uh, it was waiting so, so, uh, so long time for uh, being authenticated. So uh, let me break this. Okay, so, I need to, I have like uh, my authenticator here, I need to press the button in order to authenticate using, uh, in this case I'm using a UV key. And it's, it's, it's doing what I said before, like verifying the digital signature. And now uh, it's generating uh, like a unique identifier for that public key, and you can use that public key in order to authenticate as a second step. Now we have a credential that we can use. So this is now registered in the, in the relying party. The relying party is, can be our application, and we can have the public key stored in a database, for example. Now with that information, we can authenticate. So I click login here. It's going to generate a new challenge. 
and I'm going to validate the channels. I'm going to press here again. And the relying part is verifying the signature. And if it's valid, it means that I'm going to be authenticated. Uh, let me show you another example uh, with my phone. Okay. So I'm on the same page. And I'm going to authenticate here. I'm going to register my device. So the process is the same, and it's going to, to prompt me what I want to use here. Let me get it started, I'm going to say, for example, this supports NFC, so I can use my security key with NFC. Oh, I think that you're not doing that screen, but I'm using NFC here. Okay, meanwhile, this connects. Uh, so for example, did you know uh, when someone joins Google, uh, all of the employees receive uh, this box here. Um, you can, today, if you are using uh, Gmail, for example, you can enable uh, the usage of web authentication as a second factor. So, for example, if you are a journalist that you have, like, uh, you need to share, like, some really important information and it's confidential and it's dangerous to share that information, uh, they can opt in for a special uh, security program in order to have that stronger authentication, uh, in this case from Google, and they are using this. So the powerful thing about web authentication is that it's now uh, available for all of us. Like You can implement that in your own applications today. Um, and there are different uh, cases, scenarios, but let's say, for example, that if you uh, are in a web application that needs to have like an uh, online transaction and you need like an extra security step, you can request a user that uh, uh, using a strong authentication to accept, for example, uh, do you want to transfer this amount of money? So you add an additional, additional step in order to provide authorization for that transaction uh, using a strong authentication. Seems that I have a problem connecting to my phone here. Okay, another nice feature uh, about this uh, the, um, web authentication that me page is that uh, it has an online debugger that you can use for seeing how, how the information uh, it's, it is being generated and what is the response that you're getting, for example, when creating the channels or when you visit uh, the new credential. So, for example, here I'm going to register my USB key. Again, so the good thing uh, about that web authentication is a recent standard from the W3C is that the majority of the vendors, uh, I think that Safari uh, is starting to support web authentication too. The latest vendors, uh, versions of the uh, browser vendors are supporting web authentication, so you can use it uh, uh, right now. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, yeah, so I would touch now my security key and I'm getting the information. Of course, you don't need to buy a security key in order to use our web authentication. There, are, uh, there is the option to uh, use a software version. Uh, for example, Android already has support for it and you can uh, use uh, your phone as an authenticator. And this is a really great opportunity uh, for, uh, for other companies to create uh, uh, alternatives uh, to the authenticators and create software as an authenticator, or maybe they can be a relying party in order to provide web authentication. So uh, this is like an example of the response from the relying party generating the challenge. And as you can see, uh, this is attached to the origin that is doing uh, the request. So this is really helpful because it's going to prevent a really common attack uh, name uh, uh, phishing that basically uh, is like the top reason of many uh, vulnerabilities that we have today. Um, so far, uh, there is not any vulnerability associated uh, with web authentication, at least in terms of phishing. The, the percentage of phishing is zero when using web authentication because uh, it's directly attached to the origin that is doing the request 
and if for some reason the, the origin uh, during the request is not trust, uh, the authenticator is going to deny, uh, let's say, the transaction for authentication. So there, has, there is like uh, some other technical things associated with that, but I'm not going to go into the details about that. The, basically, it's information that this is generated under the hood uh, via the JavaScript API. And let's now use uh, this information that is generating here uh, in order to authenticate the user. is the output. So uh, this is the signature and this is the challenge. So basically this is this challenge is generated by the relying party and it needs to be something totally random but it needs to be uh, something that can be large enough in order to have some randomness. And the signature is going to uh, allow the relying party to verify if the requester is who is saying uh, who is. So this is the response when we authenticate the user. Uh, there are other options. Uh, you don't need to plug in your uh, your authenticator. You can use uh, Bluetooth authenticators. You can use your phone. As I said before, you can use uh, these uh, devices that supports NFC. And the good news is that, well, you are using JavaScript and it's supported in, in your browser right now. Let me show you. Uh, this same web page, the debugger. Um, for example, I have Microsoft Edge here. Okay, let's see. Let's show the user here. So it works. I can authenticate. If you see the experience is really similar. Let me show you in Firefox, it's a little bit different. And of course, of course, there are APIs that allow you to detect if the browser supports authentication or not in order to offer that to the user. Uh, let's see Firefox, uh, let's see Microsoft Edge. So you see that the experience here is a little bit different. It's going to appear here, but it's uh, here I can see the light, uh, the token lighting, and I can just press the button here. And that's the experience of web authentication. Um, I have uh, uh, some uh, gifts here uh, from Lotero. I, I, I'm going to ask uh, three questions. Uh, and the first one that, of course, answers the question is going to be uh, on Lotero Swag. Uh, so uh, the first question is, uh, what is the name of the password creator? His name was Fernando yes. or Paro. <laughs> Fernando, yeah. Okay, the second question. Who can tell me what is Fido? Right here, Fido. Hello. Uh, institution that uh, wants to... Uh, <laughs> reg reg sorry, reglement this so that uh, the community has a standard to build authentication on. Close enough. Uh, they also have that uh, USB keys. Yeah. I made a picture of those. Okay, okay, it's bad, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one, what are the main four features that define web authentication? I already explained four in really important features about web authentication. Okay, another question. How many years is celebrating the World Wide Web Consortium? How much? It's like 35. 35? No. No, it's not. But I know. 25? 25, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>